Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about Paul Rubens watercolors. We have talked about Paul Rubens watercolors like a lot, a lot over the past couple years. We have talked about their granulating watercolors a couple of times. We have talked about their half pans. We have talked about their tubes. We have tested their tubes. We have talked about their pocket set and we've even talked about their mainly pigments, their student grade set. We have talked about Aowin, we have talked about Owen, we have talked about Paul Rubens a lot, and for good reason. This Chinese watercolor brand is trying to shake up the Western watercolor market and it's trying to make a name for itself. So now is a good time if you're a watercolor artist and you don't mind experimenting and trying new things to find your next favorite brand. Today, we're going to be talking about their new G four half pans. This is the fourth generation of their half pans. And we are also going to be talking about their Kaimei watercolors. These are little half pans in a very cute little plastic box. I believe these are aiming for the student grade segment, whereas these are aiming for professional grade. We're going to be comparing these head to head. We're going to be comparing them against some of their other offerings, including their older half pans, as well as the Mei Liang and Aowin pigment. So this is a big watercolor unboxing swatch and review. There is even a field test segment for this. So if you guys enjoy these kind of reviews, if you find them helpful, useful, and informative, Make sure you join me over on Patreon for early access to reviews like this one and to help support these kind of reviews because these supplies are purchased out of pocket with funds from my Patreon. If you guys have different experiences with these watercolors, if your opinion differs from mine, or if you just happen to agree with me and we've come to the same conclusions, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you and you absolutely can share your differing opinions. I encourage that. And if you want to talk even more about art supplies, you can join my art centric discord server, the paint box. I'll put all of the links down in the doodly doo. There will also be show notes and pigment information for my art supply nerds out there who really want to get into the nitty gritty. If you guys are new here, hi, hello, welcome. I'm Becky Hilburn. I'm so glad you found me. I am a watercolor comic artist and illustrator. I make the watercolor comics Seven Inch Tara, which you guys can find at seveninchtara.com. If you like web comics, you can read it as a web comic, or if you prefer to hoard dead trees, like I prefer to hoard dead trees, you can purchase volume one and volume two in the Natto shop. It is about a precocious ADHD Lilliputian girl named Kara who sets out on a big adventure after discovering a huge family secret and finds friendship and cat riding in the process. It is for middle grade readers, but I think it has an all ages appeal. And if you're vibing with my outfit and if you happen to like watercolor, I think you guys will really dig it. So I really hope you guys will check it out. I am also an illustrator and my illustrations kind of follow along in the same vein as my comics. So today's review is going to be from that lens as a watercolor comic artist and illustrator. Although I do from time to time try to put myself in other artists shoes and talk about who I feel these watercolors might be a good fit for. So I hope you guys are ex excited to talk about and find out about these watercolors as I am today. I am particularly interested to see if these are a replacement respectively for Mei Liang pigments and for the older half pans of Paul Rubens. So fans of Paul Rubens, this one is definitely for you because we're going to be doing those comparisons. All right, guys, let's get to it. Hello there, art nerds. We are about to spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time talking about Paul Rubens. We have the solid watercolor. We have the newer tube watercolors, which are supposed to be an improvement on the old ones. And I really like the old ones, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how they've improved them. We have the classical art, and these are kind of like Kuratake Gensai Tambe pans in terms of format 
and we have their opaque watercolor. Don't worry, we're not doing all four of these in one video. That would be ridiculous. I'm gonna break this up into four separate videos, but I wanted to give you guys an idea of what to look forward to. Today, we're going to be talking about the Paul Rubens solid watercolors. These were purchased through Amazon. I'll show you how much I paid. Well, actually, I'll show you how much they're going for now because I believe I purchased these either during Prime Day or on Black Friday. So this arrived shrink wrapped. We have 24 colors in half pans. This has been released by Paul Rubens, but I actually think this is different from some of the other Paul Rubens half pan palettes we've taken a look at. It'll be interesting to compare them. I thought these scissors were sharp enough to get in here. They are not. cardboard packaging slides off inside we have some paperwork I've I have been impressed with the urgency of doing knowing is not enough we must apply being willing is not enough we must do inside is our swatch cards it's something that Paul Rubens does that I really appreciate and then we have our brand introduction on the back I believe this isn't really any different from what they've included in the past, so I'm not going to Google Translate it. There are two URLs at the bottom that I may take a look at, one for lbsarts.com and one for aowin at lbsarts.com. Inside here, we have another packet. This is probably specifically for these. Give you a lifetime of sincerity. Let beauty become eternal. And it is printed in both Chinese, English, and possibly Japanese, as that's what it looks like. This is the Gemstone Series Solid Watercolor. The fourth Paul Rubens generation solid watercolor gem series, the essence of the first three generations of solid watercolor, create the fourth generation of solid watercolor. Gemstone Series Solid Watercolor, based on the previous three generations product, has carried on the detail optimization, the colorant of all selects, the pure color powder, the light resistance is good, high saturation, excellent transparency and diffusion effect. The color mixing is natural with attractive packaging design. Paul Rubson, Gemstone Watercolor Series, blessing you everlasting beauty. And then here are what the colors would look like. We have our pigment information. Um, there's several single pigment colors in here, but quite a few two and three. We also have the light fastness and the opacity information. And then there's a little bit more information here as well. Then on the back, the real power to art is the commonness, which is blended in the great emotion. I'm Jean F. Miller. Earlier, the pigments used by Chinese painting artists were basically imported. On the one hand, they were limited by price and channel, and on the other hand, they were different in product types and quality. Most painting artists sometimes needed to make their own pigments to meet their needs. In the face of this industry pain point, Yu Jing Hang, who's been, who has been engaged in the painting industry for many years, is determined to make changes. In 2005, Yu Jing Hang, or Jin Hai, sorry, established a research and development center for painting pigments and in 2010, under the enlightenment of Yang Fion, president of Chinese Academy of Oil Painting, Yu Jinhai awakened his original intention of becoming a national independent brand. After several experiments, visiting many artists, chemists, and restoration experts, he went to Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands, and other oil painting birthplaces, consulted many masters of pigment technology, and finally ushered in Rubens, a national a national pigment brand, in spite of Yu Jin Hai's repeated failures. I relate to that, the repeated failures part. Today, Rubens, as an independent research and development of national painting pigment brand, is praised by many users. Behind the applause, Rubens brand adheres to the simple value of achieving the beauty in art. In the future, Rubens will continue to uphold the awe and innovation of the industry and make unremitting efforts to serve users better. I do wish there was actually more information about how this fourth generation of paints is an improvement on the other three. 
I think the gist is this is using Chinese pigments rather than importing pigments. So inside we have a black lacquer box. Now the Paul Rubens you guys have seen me look at before came in either the pink half pan palette or the little travel palette. And inside we have our paints. So here we have a little discrepancy. I was expecting, I was expecting this little plastic palette here, right? This one in particular with the smaller square or half pans, the Calmay watercolor. What I received, and let me see if I can bring it up, is this here, I think. I think this is the metal one, which is a much nicer palette, it seems like. It seems like this might be a higher quality one. So, I, I'm not super sure why I received this one and not this one, because this is what I ordered, but thank you, Paul Rubens, for the upgrade. Unfortunately for me, what I'd wanted to check out is this palette, the cheaper version. I wanted to see what the cheaper version was like. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the cheaper version and I'm going to hold off on this review until that one arrives and that way we can talk about both of them. I believe this is the set I'm looking for. These are the Cal May watercolors by Paul Rubin. This is a 24 color set. Paul Rubens will make more people like Chinese watercolors or Chinese colors. That is certainly true. They've won me over. I know they've won many of you guys over. These are the colors in this set. Don't worry if you can't read them. I will read them for you and I will also have them in the description. So since Paul Rubens accidentally sent me that metal palette, um, what I would like to do is actually compare the two and see how they differ and then see how they compare against the older Paul Rubens watercolors to see if, you know, the other set is their generation four. So I'm interested to see how their generation four watercolors compare. I would assume these are probably similar to a student grade. So maybe comparable to their Meiliang pigments line. So, ooh, that is very shrink wrapped and these scissors are very terrible. So there's going to be a whole lot of note taken. There's going to be a whole lot of comparison and there may be some follow-up videos if I can't cover everything I want to cover today, which I probably can't. That would, that would take weeks to record. So it might be better to break it up. So here it is minus the shrink wrap. It does have a cardboard belly band across it. Most of the packaging information is written in Chinese. But since I have talked about Paul Rubens quite a bit, I am going to refrain from translating it. Here is the palette itself. It is a plastic palette with a white lid, a black bottom. Somebody's hair got caught inside. And then there is kind of a push release like this. And we have our colors. Inside is a weld palette that looks like it would be removable using this little key here. I really love that kind of attention to detail. And then inside underneath, we have what looks like liquid poured half pans. So this kind of reminds me of like the Aowin or the Owin cake style watercolors or the Aowin slash Owen watercolors that's also manufactured by Paul Rubens. So I'm wondering if these are perhaps a rebranding or a repackaging of one of their lines that might not be as ubiquitous in the United States. So now that we have both of them side by side, we can actually do a little bit of comparison. The Gen 4 solid watercolors come in a nicer cardboard box. They come with a swatch sheet. They come with some printed information. They come with what looks like a cleaning cloth. I have still not figured out what these microfiber cloths are supposed to be for. They are in an enameled metal tin and they are individually wrapped. Whereas 
the Kiao Mei, and I apologize if my pronunciation is off, comes with a cardboard belly band that has the information on the back. It is a plastic case with the bottom molded to fit the half pans. Need a little bit of hand strength to open this one. However, this one will probably stay shut during travel pretty well. We have individual mixing pans up here at the top. We have a little key and then it has been sealed for freshness. So what I want to do today is I want to comparison swatch both with a special focus on the Kiao Mei because that is the newer palette. Um, the G4 seems like it is kind of more of the same, maybe with better pigments, maybe with better formulation. All of these half pans are friction fit into this black holder. And I believe you can use this to pry them out. Although I am, there we go. Come on. <laughs> Not having much luck with this. It's supposed to be fairly straightforward. And I don't know if it's my hand locking up because of the weird weather or, ooh, it's not supposed to make that noise, but I actually can't seem to get them to pop out. And it does seem like they're supposed to, and this little thing does not seem to be, you know, coated in one direction or the other. Let's try, there we go. So this at least pops out very easily. So what you can do is you could probably even fit a swatch sheet. Let's be real cheap and real cheesy. And let's reuse the sticker from the top. There we go. Now we have our palette map, our palette information all in one handy place. And then you can slip that back in there. And let's see if it causes any problems. Doesn't seem to. So that works out pretty dang well. So these look like they were liquid poured. And I am expecting kind of like Mei Liang Aowen sort of uh, handling experiences. And if I decide, I may decide to do some comparison swatches of those. Um, but I really just want to start out by swatching these and kind of just seeing how they handle and getting kind of a feel for them. We're going to be swatching on the same paper that we use for all of our watercolor swatches. It is the Blick Premier Cotton Rag Cold Press Watercolor Paper. And this has been the standard that I've been swatching on since I started the student grade showdown about two years ago. It's actually pretty surprising how long I've been doing some of this stuff. And I really like this paper. I think it is a good but affordable cotton rag paper that handles quite well. So it makes for a good standard for these kinds of tests. I don't have any kind of sponsorship from Blick and pads like this one are purchased from Dick Blick using funds raised from my Patreon. So big thank you again to my patrons for their support in these kind of projects. Now my experience with some of these student grade liquid poured, and I'm assuming this is student grade given the price point, but student grade liquid poured watercolors is a lot of them don't really benefit much from pre-activation. It has a tendency to turn them soupy. So I will probably not pre-activate those unless I see a reason, you know, to <laughs> change my mind about that. So what I am going to be looking for is I am going to be looking for opacity. I'm going to be looking for mass tone. I'm going to be looking to see how the colors swatch out when we add water and just anything else that seems to stick out to me. So this black line here is going to be our opacity swatches and I probably can't get all 24 colors on one line. I do tend to do kind of chunky swatches, but I am hoping that I can do my color mixing and my wet into wet test on this paper. And that way it'll all be in one place. So let's see if we can get it on two lines. 
So the first part in the word Kai Mei, Kai has the meaning of adorable or charming, suggesting the idea of being kind and gentle. The second part, Mei, means beautiful or elegant, highlighting the grace and beauty associated with the name. So as a whole, Kai Mei conveys the idea of a charming and beautiful person with a kind and delicate personality. And I found this information out at first names name hyphen Kai Mei. I'll have that listed out in the description for you guys, as well as paulrubensart.com. The colors in this palette are Chinese white, lemon yellow hue, cadmium yellow pale hue, cadmium yellow hue, gamboge hue, cadmium red pale hue, cadmium red hue, cadmium red deep hue, Permanent Rose, Alizarin Crimson Hue, Purple Lake, Cerulean Blue Hue, Cobalt Blue Hue, Ultramarine, Intense Blue, Indigo, Sap Green, Hooker's Green, Light, Emerald, Burnt Sienna, Raw Umber, Van Dyke Brown, Burnt Umber, and Ivory Black. And I'll have the pigment information, the opacity, and the light fast info down in the description for you guys. In terms of swatching, the colors activate quickly and have good saturation. They do dry a bit duller, but that's to be expected. While some of the colors are lighter than I had hoped, this may be due to the fact that I didn't pre-activate this palette. Color-wise, these seem to be similar to the Mei Liang Pigments palette that I reviewed a while back, just a different form factor. not quite dry. Uh, it's very rainy outside, so I'm going to give them some more time, but I am going to start doing the color mixing. So I'm going to use the provided palette and I'm going to basically be trying to use primary colors to mix good secondary colors. In a palette this size, we have a lot of choices and you don't have to mix all your colors, but this can be a good indication of how you'll be able to kind of tailor this to suit your needs and the kind of illustration that you want to be able to do. I'm also planning on doing a field test with these as part of this review so this will give me kind of a good idea of what I can and cannot do with these paints and if a field test is even feasible. I'm using the included mixing palette and the paints want to beat up on the plastic so it isn't easy to mix colors like you think it would be and the mixes seem kind of weak. It does take a bit more paint to get saturated mixes and the mixing palette takes getting used to but I did get the hang of it. I was able to mix up a lot of great colors from this palette and a lot of the colors separate a bit which leads to interesting effects. I do think there's a good bit of optical brighteners in here probably comparable to Mei Liang or Aowen and I will compare and swatch them against those later. Colors do dry significantly lighter this may be an issue for certain types of watercolor illustration also the colors sediment out and break apart pretty significantly this may be pretty with like floral illustration but it wouldn't be good for mixing colors for like faces So next we're gonna do the wet into wet test and give all of this a chance to dry before we go back and we try to do the lift test. Colors disperse pretty readily and easily, but there are some areas with harsher delineation than I've seen with Paul Rubin's watercolors in the past, particularly their tubes. Colors dried pretty bright. pretty rainy outside. These seem fairly dry. I know that good practice would be to wait 24 hours and then come back to it, but 
I'll be real. If I'm lifting watercolors from a watercolor illustration, I'm probably not going to wait a couple days to see if I can get them to lift back up again. You know what I mean? So I like to disclose this because I know some people would prefer the 24 hour lift wait time and some people have no problem with it being like surface dry and me attempting my lift test. So I am going to use my flat brush and some clean water and we will do the lift test barely lift at all, which makes me wonder if they have a different binder. Are they meant to be more like traditional Chinese watercolors in a half pan format? That would be really interesting. these are not like perfectly one-to-one -one, I did notice some similarities with some of Paul Rubin's other student grade ish watercolors like the Mei Liang pigments this is the 36 color set here you guys have heard me talk about this set a lot as well as they're less available in the United States Aowin or Owen you see the branding differs between the two palette and I have the swatches for that here. So what I was thinking about doing, or what I am going to do, is I'm going to swatch all three sets on one big piece of watercolor paper, and hopefully we can figure some things out through handling the paints. I'm gonna start with the Kai Mei set. I'm gonna have the full, full show notes cause it got pretty lengthy in the description and linked over on Google Docs if you guys are curious. So with the Kai Mei, they are quick to activate. Swatches are saturated, bright, brilliant colors with the exception of the neutrals. And these would probably be great for florals. So I reviewed the Mei Liang palette a while back. If you guys are curious for a full review, I've got one and I'll link it for you guys. I did pre-activate these based on my past experiences with these watercolors. These are very saturated and a swipe delivers a fair amount of color. There are 36 extruded half pans and a plastic liner with a metal case. There's a lot of colors in common with the Kai Mei palette with of course more options as this is a 36 color set. And I believe the prices are pretty comparable. You can also find this palette on Amazon. I actually purchased mine at my local brick and mortar art supply store. Aowin palette. This is also by Paul Rubens. Well, it's by their parent company and this was purchased from AliExpress. So I don't believe this is really intended for the Western market. I pre-activated these again, based on past experiences. I've swatched them before, but I've never field tested them because they seem so similar to the Mei Liang. There are 36 half pans in neat little rounded squares. They can be freely moved around inside the metal palette. The Aowin palette seems to be very similar to the Mei Liang pigments palette with some of the colors switched around. I feel like the neutrals in this palette might be a bit better. In general though, colors are still saturated with a fun assortment of colors that work well for a variety of subjects. This palette is harder to get. As I mentioned, I purchased mine from AliExpress and I don't really see it around. That said, all three palettes seem very similar and the colors swatch in much the same way. That said, I believe that the Mei Liang and Aowin colors lift like watercolor generally does and the Kai Mei palette does not. Probably the same pigments used with a different formulation. swatching all three palettes I would say the similarities are more common than the differences it seems like they're using some of the same pigments to make the colors the only really striking difference that I came across is that the Kiao Mei 
is not as liftable as you would expect from watercolors, whereas the Mei Liang and the Aowin are much more liftable, kind of like what we're used to seeing with watercolors. So these will be interesting to field test and I may need to come up with something a little bit different from what I normally do to really best take advantage of their positive properties without butting my head against their negative properties. Taking a look at the Cal May watercolors, now it's time to take a look at the G4 watercolors. One of the first things I need to do is I need to get these unwrapped. I am going to do one of these in regular time and the rest in time lapse. So every one of these half pants has a belly band that says Paul Rubens opaque white. It has the color number. Whoop. Then over on this side in tiny, tiny print, we have the relevant information. I, so since this is white on black, it's actually hard to tell if this is meant to mean opaque or if that's meant to mean transparent. It's also a little bit squishy. I wonder if they're filled all the way. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to salvage the packaging as much as possible and put it back on our half pans. And that should be fairly easy. Oh, nope, they are not as sticky as you would think. Maybe I can replace it. So that is what the half pan looks like. It's a pretty solid little half pan does not look as deep as a standard half pan and it kind of reminds me of the Aowin half pans we've seen before. Here is an empty half pan from F Club. So not quite as deep and maybe a little bit wider. So you're probably still getting the same amount of paint just in a slightly different format. we've got all of our half pans unwrapped, we can do some swatching on the included swatch card. So I'm going to go ahead and tape this down to the desk and we can get to swatching. The colors in this set are opaque white, light yellow lemon, cadmium yellow hue, Indian yellow, Naples yellow, orange, cadmium red hue, carmine, magenta, violet, indigo, ultramarine, Prussian blue, cyan, brilliant green, may green, permanent green, olive green, yellowish, yellow ochre, burnt umber, sepia, English red, Payne's gray, and black. And I will have the pigment information, light fastness, and transparency down in the description for you guys. So I pre-activated these paints and everything but indigo seems to swatch well. I gave indigo another attempt. The paper seems like cardstock and not cotton rag. Something seems to be strange about this indigo. These swatches have finally dried, so I'm going to go ahead and remove them from my desktop and we can move on to doing our swatches on cotton rag paper. And today we're going to be using the Blick Studio cotton rag paper. I told you guys, this is what I use for basically everything, all of these kind of swatch tests. So here we go get everything nice and situated and we can get to swatching. Paul Rubin seems to really love cotton rag paper because the colors are so brilliant with the exception of that indigo. But at a glance, I can't tell how these are an improvement over the last generation of Paul Rubin's half pans. I had the same kind of issue with the G4 tubes versus the older set of tubes. 
I'm just not sure how these are supposed to actually be an improvement. I know with G4 they promise better pigment and better light fastness, but just with my experience with the G4 tubes comparing them to the older tubes, I really didn't see that. I just want to point out that I hadn't actually planned on purchasing and reviewing this palette. It was sent by mistake when I ordered the Kaime, and I would have sent it back if I had noticed the mistake sooner. Too many months had passed by, so I decided to just go ahead and do a comparative review because I'm sure many of you guys would like to see how these new G4 paints compare against the older half pans. Looking at the swatches as they dry, I would say that in terms of saturation, they're maybe a little more saturated than the Kaime. these swatches dry, let's do a little bit of color mixing. With color mixing, I was able to mix a lot of really nice secondary colors and get some interesting mixes, although I struggled to mix a Payne's Gray. I am also using the included palette in the lid and it has some of the same beat up problems. I know we can kind of correct that with a melamine sponge just to kind of scratch up the surface a little bit. Now I was able to mix a dove gray using Naples yellow and ultramarine blue. It'll be interesting to see if the colors shift and separate out as they dry like the Kai May did. Let's do the wet into wet tests. So for the wet into wet test, a lot of these colors intersperse readily. Some even get lost in the wet into wet, interspersing maybe a little too much. Once these watercolors get wet, they have a tendency to get soupy, so color control may be challenging. for the lift test. So again, I am going to use this flat, a cup of clean water and a paper towel to attempt to lift these colors so we can see how staining and how lifting various colors and their pigments are. These paints are not as lifting as I would like, but I think they're more lifting than the Kaime, which were not really lifting at all. As I was cleaning the lid, I did notice that there was some staining. So right now I can spot several differences between this less expensive palette and this more expensive palette, both from Paul Rubens, but I really want to put it to the head to head test. So I think I'm going to do a swatch off. We're going to start with the Calme. We are then going to do the Gen 4 and then we're going to swatch the older set of Paul Rubens watercolors I have. So kind of like what we just did when we swatched this one against the Mei Liang, against the Alwyn watercolors, we're going to do that again. So now I want to compare the G4 half pans against the Kai Mei palette. We're going to start with the Kai Mei palette. So the G4 half pans are larger and seem to contain more paint than the Kai Mei half pans. I did not pre-activate the Kai Mei so it wouldn't turn soupy. They're pretty easy to swatch and the colors are bright when wet. Some, particularly the neutrals, dry quite a bit duller. With the G4, I did re-preactivate them as they seem to have dried out. Now, as I'm swatching, pretty similar to the Kaime in terms of activation and handling, that Naples Yellow slash Jean Brilliant, the kind of skin tone color sort of stands out in terms of this palette, but there's a lot of colors in common between the two palettes. And, you know, 
I don't really notice like a whole lot of handling or operating differences. That's something to be said about Paul Rubin's student grade is that they're really quite good. I did find that I missed a color somewhere. I am not sure where and the indigo is still not activating well. The pigment info is not available on the swatch sheet. So here is the older Paul Rubens. It does not include a white, which I prefer. The indigo reacted better and there's no Naples yellow. And I kind of wonder how the color selection compares between the three palettes. The pigment info is available on the older Paul Rubens swatch sheet. I think I might like the color selection and pigmentation of the older Paul Rubens better than the newer G4. At this point, I decided I need to create a spreadsheet to kind of collate all of the pigment information. And I will share that with my patrons. But one of the things I noticed while I was making this spreadsheet is that Paul Rubin switched over to a more standardized one through five star rating for light fastness. The older sets, it's like a one through eight sort of light fast series that doesn't really correspond with what we're used to from Western watercolors. The older palette does not include opacity info. So I was not able to include the opacity info for the half pans at this point in time. And I'm going to continue updating the spreadsheet as I review other Paul Rubens products. And like I mentioned, I'm going to make it accessible to my patrons. So kind of surprisingly to me, all three palettes are a little bit different. The Kiao Mei, uh, Kwai Mei, and the G4 both contain a white, whereas the older Paul Rubens does not. The G4 contains a Naples yellow that is kind of like a flesh tint. But I have to say of these three, I think I prefer the original, not the original, but the older Paul Rubens. I like the color saturation. I like the color gamut. I like the fact that they don't waste space with a white. In general, this seems like a better fit for me and this would be the palette that I'll be field testing rather than the G4 palette, which kind of works out because that one was sent to me by mistake and I'd had no plans on reviewing the G4 palette anyway. But it does make me kind of wonder about the pigments. So the older Paul Rubens includes the pigment information Whereas the newer one, which is supposed to be improved, actually doesn't, and that's a little bit surprising, but we do have a brochure here that has all the pigment information. So I believe this is all 24 colors anyway. So what I am going to do is, oh, and the How May has the pigment information on the back. So what I'm going to do is I am going to compile that and have that in the description below in case you guys are curious. Now, I do want to do a little bookmark field test with this palette here. And I probably, I had planned on doing a little illustration with the uh, pink Paul Rubens. I'll probably do that as well. I don't really feel the need to field test the G4. I'm not really that happy with the G4 as compared to their or older formulation, but if you feel differently, if you like the G4 over the older formulation, let me know down in the comments. So somewhat surprisingly to me, I found that I like the Eowyn and the Mei Liang just as much and maybe a little bit more than this palette here. So if you already have the Mei Liang or the Eowyn, there is really no need for you to get this palette unless you just happen to like this form factor a little bit better. I'm not gonna field test both palettes, but I did want to do a little bit of a test and demonstration, a little bit of real world with this palette here. And I have a cute idea for a watercolor bookmark that should be super easy to do. And it's kind of inspired by this catfish illustration that I did with Kara. And how it's inspired by this illustration is how I handled the water. So I think this will be a lot of fun and it'll be very easy and you don't need any drawing skills to be able to paint along with me.
We're gonna start by taping down our piece of cotton rag watercolor paper using artist tape to a piece of chipboard. For this, I have two flats, a silver black velvet mixed fiber and a synthetic flat. I'm going to start by applying my layer of yellow. I'm using a light yellow and you should let it dry completely. And then once your first layer of yellow has dried, we're gonna use our synthetic brush and we're going to dip it into removable masking fluid. We're gonna use similar brush strokes. I opted to apply fewer as we went down the bookmark and I allowed it to dry completely. So for our second layer, I'm using permanent rose, which creates this really pretty orange as it dries. I allow it to dry completely before we apply our next layer of masking fluid. So we apply more masking fluid, except this time we're applying less than we did the previous time because the point is to kind of build up these layers. We're gonna allow this to dry fully before we apply our third layer. So for our third layer, I wanted to select something with variable opacity and some granulation for an interesting effect. So I picked cerulean blue hue and I allowed it to dry. After I kind of went through this and allowed it to dry, I wanted a little bit more variety. So I applied a thicker layer of cerulean blue and I allowed that to dry as well. So we have Y, M, and C. Once those have dried, I'm gonna use a masking fluid pickup to pick it up. And we're gonna have some really interesting glazing and we're gonna have some really interesting um, visual color mixes, optical color mixes. Now, I realized I wanted to kind of break up some of the yellow. So I used some short strokes and I added another layer of some of my colors and I allowed them to dry in between applications. Now this didn't really tell me a whole lot about these paints other than I didn't really see much melting with the layers. So if you want really crispy layering, these might be a good option. The colors dry kind of dull. So this might be better with more translucent colors. So what are the pros and cons of the Cow May watercolors? Let's start with the positive. I really like the style of this plastic palette. It's slightly more compact than a regular 24 color metal palette. I like the interior mixing wells and the little key to pry it out. And it's fairly inexpensive. So what about the cons? Mei Liang is already doing what Cow May seems to be doing, unless y'all know something I don't. It can be challenging to find information about these different product lines. I wasn't able to pry out the half pan, so I can't tell if this takes standard size half pans or not. If it does, that could make for a neat little travel palette. If it doesn't, it means you're kind of stuck with what they've got. And these paints seem to get used up fast. What about the pros and cons of the G4 half pans? Again, we're going to start with the positive. The secondary mixes from this palette are pretty with interesting granulation and colors mostly diffuse well into water, leaving pretty mixes. How about those cons? Well, I like the older professional Paul Rubens half pans a bit better than this palette in terms of color selection and how the paints handle. And the paints are not as saturated as I would have expected. My verdict. I think I might recommend the Mei Liang over the Cal May and the older Paul Rubens over the G4 and the Cal May palettes. New things are not always better, and this is a good example of not needing to buy every palette that comes out. If you're looking for a good, inexpensive palette, I still highly recommend the Mei Liang Pigments palette. I think that's a great first palette for student grade watercolorists, and it's just kind of a good, inexpensive palette all around. I was kind of disappointed in these new offerings from Paul Rubens. I found the Kai Mei watercolors to be, eh? They're like similar to Mei Liang, but I found them to be not as good as the Mei Liang and don't come in as many colors. So if you already have your Mei Liang watercolors or you already have a student grade that you're happy with, I don't really feel like these are a replacement for that. <laughs> for the G4 watercolors, all I can say is like, I know they are supposed to be using better pigments. I know there's supposed to be an improvement on what Paul Rubens, the company, AON, 
has learned about watercolor over the years competing in a Western market, but I have to say, I prefer their older watercolors much more to these. I don't really care for the G4. And in my opinion, you know, as a comic artist, I would not recommend them, especially if you already have the older sets. And if you're looking to buy some half pans, if you're looking to buy Paul Rubens, I would recommend getting the older set over this one. It just wasn't to my taste. We did a little mini field test with the Cal May and we painted this very cute, very easy to paint, very bright and colorful bookmark. But I found that they don't lift quite as much as I might want and they may require a different application. Here are the swatches, the color mixing and the wet and to wet for the Kai Mei. Here is the comparison chart comparing Eowyn, Mei Liang and Kai Mei. And if you guys really, really want me to scan these, I can scan them and share them on Patreon. Let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to hoard them for my reference. Here is the comparison swatches between the Kai Mei, the G4, and the older Paul Rubens half pans. And I believe I purchased that set of the half pans last year or the, a year prior. So they're really not old half pans. And then here are the swatches for the Paul Rubens G4. Even though I am not recommending these over their older offerings, even though they weren't really for me, I still really appreciated the ha appreciated having the opportunity to take a look at them, to review them, and share my findings with you guys. Hopefully I spent the money so you don't have to, and I firmly believe that finding the right art supplies for you that you can afford is a big part of making art a habit, and that's what we're all about here, whether we're sharing tutorials, we're sharing reviews, or we're talking about influential artists. I want to help you guys make art a part of your daily life. So I have some fantastic drawing and painting tutorials that I'd like to share with you guys. I can teach you how to draw anything using volumetric drawing. I can teach you how to level up your sketchbook game by utilizing reference. I can show you the basics of watercolor if you're just new to watercolor. I can show you guys some easy ways to get familiar with your paints and use up your scraps of watercolor paper in my Stash Buster series and you can make some cute bookmarks like the one we have here. If you are interested in making your own comics, I've got Buku tutorials aimed at helping you. Whether we are doing the entire comic making process, we're learning how to use watercolor for our, our comics, or you're interested in learning how to draw people specifically, I have so many playlists and so many tutorials to help you move forward in your art journey. Because in my mind, the world definitely could use more artists, whether you're doing it for love, you're doing it for fun, you're doing it for a hobby, or you hope to do it professionally. I hope that I have resources to help you guys out with that. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. If there is an unusual watercolor or drawing supply that you think I should take a look at, let me know down in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you guys again really soon with another art supply review or tutorial. Have a wonderful day, guys.